So this right here is my Nissan Leaf, it's an EV. And today I wanna go over how to install a level two EV charger at home. This right here is the Autel Maxi charger. I am collaborating with them on this video and this works with all electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles. It looks great here, doesn't it? But let's rewind to yesterday when we installed this one. Let's open it up. Very clean and modern looking. It has a, a nice screen here. So this comes with a steel plate. This is what you attach to the wall. If you, like me, are a woodworker and you use your garage for that, then chances are you don't have the space to park your car inside. Uh, so I needed a charger that I could install outside to make it uh, easier. And not all chargers are indoor, outdoor. This one is. This is a 240 volt charger, which means the first thing we need is a 240 volt outlet. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about installing a 240 volt dryer outlet for EV charging. You can take a look at that video. Um, and this is what we're going to plug that into. We're going to find the studs in the wall here, drill a hole through and attach the uh, charger on the outside. Right here is really the perfect spot because this is where we park the car so we can just plug it in. We got conduit, we got wire, we got an outdoor junction box. And as always, consult your local electrician for any advice, check up on your local codes. I am not a certified electrician. Um, I'm just gonna share how we're gonna go about doing this today. This is an eight gauge wire rated for 50 amps. It's going to go through this conduit. And we have the charger right here. This is gonna go in there. So what is it that we need to do here? Um, there really aren't that many parts to doing this job. We need to funnel the wire and connect it through here. And uh, we need to drill a hole through the wall and attach this plate on the outside and uh, connect the wiring. Okay, so you don't have to take off this whole thing. You can just take off the center part right here. But I want to show what it looks like inside. So you don't have to. The lid part and the interior part. So this little dial right here where you see the numbers, that's where you can hard control how many amps you want this to deliver. Okay, so in the instructions here, you can see the positions and what they correlate to. Two uh, means circuit breaker 30. We have a 30 circuit breaker, so that's what we are setting. You can also you know, control this by the app, but if you wanna set it like you can't go above that, you can set it right in here. So we're installing this outside and we got a three quarter inch conduit that we're going to attach right in there. So the unit is going to sit around here and then the conduit box is going to come around here. So just measuring out like how much of this we need. So it comes like here into the box. So something like this you can cut right here. Two hots and a ground. See the ground symbol right there, live one, live two. So here now we have a bare wired covered by paper and we have a black and we have a white. Since we're doing 240, both the black and the white um, are live. We got the wire through the conduit and this piece on here. Easier when you don't have a super long conduit to work with. So cut this <laughs> to size. A little bit annoying getting it through, but if it's not hugely long, it's a lot easier. Well, I didn't want mm. Cover is back on the unit. We have the conduit going through here with the wire coming out on the other end. The manufacturer recommends that the bottom of the box will be you know, in between this distance. So we'll probably put it somewhere around here. So the unit is going to attach onto the stud and then we're going to attach a box yeah, um, next to it that also ideally should be attached to a stud a little bit of space in between for the, uh, for the conduit. This is the box that we're using. We drilled a hole in the center and in the bottom. So this will go like this. We got the metal plate on the wall here and it has these two hangers right here and a little ledge right here. 
on the back here we have two bolts coming out and a little area for this to rest. So to attach it, and this, this uh, wire here is quite heavy, so this charging cord. So I, ma I make sure I get it in. There's one more screw and this one is going to attach this to the plate. Okay, perfect. This is really solid on here now, nothing is going to move. This I believe is a 25 foot cable. It's, it's a nice feel. It's really solid. Wow. Okay, change of plan. We're gonna put the box in the wall behind there instead. So we're gonna have this coming in here. Obviously there is a wire in here, so I wanna make sure that don't actually cut the wire too. <laughs> this is not ideal, it's really annoying to get this on here. This is to connect it to the junction box and to waterproof it. Okay, you got the box secured to the wall. This was rather tight, but now it's time to funnel the, uh, the wire through the hole. So junction box is attached, charger is attached, and we have the wire going through the wall. Now all we need to do is connect it on the other side. So now we need to connect the wire to one of these NEMA 1450P. Um, and then once that's done, we can just plug it right into the wall where we have our 240 volt outlet, dryer outlet. Hot, hot, mm -hmm. ground, Neutral, we're not using the neutral, we're only using the hots mm -hmm. and the ground. Okay, we got the wires connected into the plug and the plug connected in the wall. Getting this wire into this plug though was annoying. They're really hard to bend and get in place, but... Ooh, look how crisp! So now uh, the charger is blinking, indicating that it is charging. I can also see that because my light on my car is blinking. So I would say that this is definitely a doable project for the DIYer. However, if you are uncomfortable with it, I would just hire an electrician because you want to make sure this is done right. You're working with a lot of, a lot of current here, so you don't want to have any issues. Now there really are two parts to installing this in the way that we did it. The first part is setting up the, uh, the 240 volt outlet, and there's another video for that. And the next part is connecting this to a NEMA 1450 plug that can go into the outlet. You can also hardwire this in if you would prefer doing it that way. I mean, I think this looks great. The screen here, it's non-interactive, so it's not a touch screen. It just is showing you like what's going on. Right, right now, the charger is blinking because it is charging the car up. So let's take a look at the app, shall we? Basically, you can see information, how much power it is using, how much it is costing. You can set how much your electricity costs. We have the max charge current set to 24 amps. And our price right here is 15 cents per kilowatt hour. That, de that depends a little bit on the hours of the day. You can create a schedule if you'd like. So you only want to charge it during certain times of the day when it's cheaper. Now this charger has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Ethernet, um, as well as RFID capabilities, which I thought was kind of cool. Radio frequency ID. You can get a separate RFID card, it doesn't come with this. But then you can set it up in terms of permission that in order to access this, you first have to swipe this card. So if you were living, I don't know, in an apartment complex and this was like a shared parking space and you wanted to make sure nobody else was using your charger, um, you could set something like that up, which I thought was kind of interesting. I have it set right now to just start charging automatically so you don't have to fiddle with anything when you when you come home and just want to plug the car in. It was not a big deal to install. If you have any questions about that, please let me know in the comments below. I'll put a link to this in the description. Um, please check it out. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. 
it's kind of funny, like once you get used to driving an electric car, um, it's really hard to think about ever going back to a gas powered car. I just love this thing. Um, when we first got it, um, you know, uh, what was that, a couple months ago now, you know, I was like on a high. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. I have calmed down a little bit now, but I still, <laughs> still think it's really cool. I love taking this out and basically feeling like you're driving around for free more or less, which you are for most of the time.